Hello everyone, welcome back to Shadowrun Returns. Let's see here, back, yes. Karma, lots. Let's take a look, spend karma. Now first thing I want to look at is charisma. Since we're doing the infiltration thing and pretending to be a uh, part of the cleaning crew and the staff of this building, we need to make sure that we have the etiquette necessary. So having an etiquette of security and maybe social life. Does that give me another one? Doesn't look like it. So we're not going to do that. Um, we need to increase our strength. Okay. That leaves us with two. Gain a bonus to hit point recovery when using a med. Oh, we might as well use that. Certainly will come in handy later, you know? Okay, what do we got? Hmm. Don't we look snazzy? All right, let's do it. Uh oh. The supervisor has a look of a stuffed shack manager with delusions that he's on a career track rather than what he is, a disposable diamond dozen resource. Hey, there you are. I'm Steve Scott. I'll be your direct supervisor. Sorry I missed you when you first came in, but I only found out that you were starting an hour ago when you suddenly showed up in the system. Weird glitch or something. Uh-huh. Normally we'd watch an orient orientation trade and walk through our mission statement, but well, it's going to be hard for you on your first day, but you're going to need to clean up some blood. Maybe a lot. Cleaning up other people's messes is what I do. You'll have your hands full. There was some sort of a break-in last night. Some people were, um... Just get things cleaned up on this floor. And listen, people are going to be on edge today. So try to stay invisible and don't get into any trouble. Otherwise, they're going to call they're going to call me, and I'm going to have to reprimand you and put a note in your file. Sounds good. We'll get the we'll get to those orientation trades another day. I hope they get whoever did this. Only a fool would attack Telestrian corporate office and think they can get away with it. Start heading from room to room and clean what needs cleaning. Good luck and welcome to Telestrian. Thank you. Telestrian guard, what do you have to say? What can I do for you? I need to get upstairs. My supervisor says there's more cleaning to do. The top floors may only be accessed with the expressed authorization of Eric Silverstar, or VP of Security. You can head to the lower floors if your supervisor wants. Okay. Well, I'd better get back to it. Alright, so now's not the time. 
Let's start in here. Or not. Celestia and Guard. I have to say, at this point, it's not looking good. Celestrian worker, I don't know how it happened. Nonetheless, our records show this terminal was left unsecured in direct contravention of Telestrian corporate policy. You failed in your duty. I know it's duty above all for you security types, but I am the victim here. I swear. Perhaps when Mr. Silverstar gets his next promotion, that will become a value for your data pushers as well. Right now, it seems your value is clock out early and ignore my, my responsibilities. Don't go anywhere. I need to take my report to Eric. The wage slave is on edge. He's staring vacantly at his terminal with his hands to his face and his fingers twitching nervously. What do you want? Can't you see I'm busy? Looks like you're in some, looks like you're in some real trouble, chummer. Buzz, unless you can clean up a shattered career, leave me alone. It would only take a few moments to install a ship, but perhaps it's not wise course of action while in view of a loyal wave slate. Oh no, of course not. Basically, we need to get these people out of the rooms. Locked down. There's nothing here. Okay. So we're going to have to... Let's see, there are two people in there. How about in here? There's no one in here. Okay. You're worthless twit. Tech worker. Celestrian tech worker, as the Celestrian tech jockey turns to speak, you notice the panel has been removed from one of the land racks just behind you. Thanks for coming. Can you believe it? Silverstar is calling it an intrusion, but I know the aftermath of a shadow run when I see it. Start over in the corner and make sure you don't get any solvents on my servers. We're going to use our charisma for sure. Do you think you could duck out for a smoke or something? It would be easier if I didn't have to clean around you. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no problem. Just another day in paradise, right? The open panel is a rat's nest that cables and half dismembered hardware. Some of it loose. Take some of the land parts. Matrix Emergency Power Junction. Remove the access panel, access panel from the panel, and place a com, com link chip. The access panel comes off with a quiet pop, and you place a chip inside. Okay, so that's one. You are still here. The 
The two men are staring into the vent and shaking their heads. Look, Raoul. Raoul. I know, I know, and you know, that there's nothing in the vent. But when I told that to Silverstar, he accused me of not wanting to prowl in there. Said was letting the company down by not displaying the corporate value of duty. The suits sure love their mission statements and all that track, but today isn't the day for Celestrian Corp duty above all crap. Several of us did the ultimate duty last night. I guess we should just be happy Mr. Tele Telestrian isn't in today. Just get in there and take another look. I have got to go upstairs and report. <sighs> a filthy guard is looking into an open vent. He clearly is not enjoying the idea of climbing back into the duct. Sorry. I tracked that track all over the floor. He shakes his head. Man, I can't believe what happened to the night watch. I'm going to use the charisma again. Me either. You think you're done with the vents for today? They want me to get this room back in order. If anyone asks, you saw me in there, okay? Will do. Insert the comm chip. Same as before. Two more karma. Gotta love the covert ops. Let's see if we can talk to this person again. None of this will matter after I'm fired out on the street and eating dog food. Just leave me alone. I might have just the thing to help you out. He shakes his head. I doubt it. You, you know the guy who said life isn't fair? He was talking about me. We're going to use the charisma again. Security's bullying you, but I could make it look like your terminal was tampered with and no one would be the wiser. You're right. There is no reason I should let security push me around. He steals himself. Just do it quick. Come on. There we go. You place the cables and data chips around the terminal casing. Thanks so much. I won't forget this when your review comes up. Hey, no problem, sir. Just glad I could help. Would you mind clearing out here for a little while? There's a lot to do. You bet. Just remember to keep this just between us. Of course. We get to remove the access panel. Comlink chip. We get the last one. There we go. Let's go talk to this guard. What can I do for you? I need to get upstairs. My supervisor said there's more to do. The top floor. Okay, yes. Hey, I found all these chips on some of the matrix switch boxes. Is that important? The guard thinks for a moment and activates his comm link. He turns his back on you and has a brief conversation. Then he turns back. Mr. Silverstar wants to see you in his office. Immediately. Of course.
collecting the sample. The brutish dog-eat-dog -dog existence of a slum dweller is a far cry from the quiet desperation and existential nothingness of a corporate wage slave. Yet after your time at Telestrian Industries, it's unclear which is more bleak. The elevator rises smoothly. It's blandersized music assaulting you once again as you ascend to the executive floor and your goal. Body bags. We have no reason to go in here, but I can't help myself. Hey, this is a restricted area. Sorry. Okay, fine, fine. A gurney, a gurney. Eric Silverstar. There you are. It seems that some of my best are letting me down, and it's good to see that you're displaying one of the most important of my three key values. Well, it's duty above all, right? He laughs. Well, yes, that is the first value. I'm glad more than those outside of security follow it, and from a janitor, no less. No, I'm speaking of my third and final value of vigilance, which seems to be sorely lacking around here. Thank you, sir. Well, rewards and punishments must, uh, must give in where required. Now please start filling out the report on the data pad. Now, I'm afraid I must ask you not to sit in my chair, given your attire. I need to go ahead downstairs and investigate your findings. I'll be right back. Your calm link begins to ring. You pick up. So these paintings must be what all those expensive deliveries were. You don't have much time. I am tracking Silverstar, and he's already stepping off the elevator. I don't think your disguise will hold up much longer. I'll update you on his movements. Hurry, mon ami. There's an open bottle of expensive scotch expensive scotch and a single glass that appears to be half empty and a half smoked cigar. The painting is a small lighthouse and intense storm that perch. Push the frame. Pops back out. Huh. Push the frame. He has a few guards, nah, a tech worker, and very nervous wage slave gathered in the boardroom and is beginning to question them. Paint him. Okay, hang on. What do these say? Let's take a look. Duty. Push the frame. Yes. Okay. That's Unity. No. What was this one? It's missing. Push the frame. Ah, oh, damn. This is not going well. They raise. They are raising their voices. Okay, there. We're in. 
Ah, uh, come on. Or not, it's partially open? Is it this one? No, it's Vigilance? Come on. Ah, oh, brain's not working. Yes, push the frame. There we go. There's a safe that has a large DNA scanner. Front most likely key to Mr. Silver Star. Pick up the half smoked cigar. Cigarettes and cigars are fantastic for carrying DNA. Actually, I learned that in uh, my evidence class. Uh, put the moist end of the cigar on the DNA scanner. Take the sample. Great work, Monami. Ugh. Sorry about that, the game minimized. Um. Great work, Monami. The time for stealth has passed. It has set off every alarm in the system, but I have unlocked the executive elevator, and your path is clear. Head to the elevator and make your escape. Okay, let's book it. You can't go in there. Watch me. Okay, executive elevator is over this way. This is pretty interesting. Let's see. Detective Mikulski stands smirking, surrounded by armed and twitchy Lone Star officers. Good morning, moron. Good morning, Detective Mikulski. It's a fine day for police corruption, isn't it? Smirk broadens. That's right, dummy. Keep flapping your jaw. That sort of thing will be perfect for where you're going. Mr. T... Celestrian wants to meet you in person. He wants to chat about last night's fun and games. You can come along quietly or you can meet him in a body bag. He smiles wolfishly. Come on, Drek for Brains. Make the wrong choice. Let's get this over with. I have things to do. Damn, I was hoping to be able to bring you in feet first. The estate. Ah, the estate. From the floor of the Lone Star Cruiser, you watch the tops of the of the downtown corridor's office buildings disappear, replaced by the gray overcast of the I-90 bridge. The nylon restraints bind your wrists and ankles, along with Mikulski's whistling to the radio. Make for an unpleasant ride. Half an hour later, the cruiser hits a whisp... Whisper smooth patch of road, and a magnificent mansion fills your view. It's designed a blend of old world finery and elvish grace. The car pulls up to an abrupt halt, and you're dragged onto the driveway where Mikulski pulls a nasty looking knife and cuts your bonds. You look up to see your surrounding by a squad of green clad ghosts, special force special forces troops from Tier Terringer. 
I, I can never pronounce that. That's the Elven Nation. Messaging the fe massaging the feeling back into your numb extremities, you prepare to meet the man himself, James Telestrian the Third. Mikulski smirks. Want some advice, moron? Of course you don't. You're a shadow runner, and you live by your own rules, don't you? I suggest you keep your smart-ass remarks to yourself this time, human. Mr. Telesterin isn't some street meat you can impress or intimidate. He's a brains behind the throne of Tyr... 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 Whatever. <laughs> and the one, of, one of the richest men in Seattle. Uh, richer than hell elves take a dump the same way I do, Mikulski. No. And he holds your leech, leash, right, Mikulski? You his lapdog? His eyes say, I'd love to kill you now, but his mouth continues to smirk. I got one of the richest and most powerful men in the Pacific Northwest taking care of me, dumbass. What do you got? Free will. You're dumber than I thought. Enjoy your chat. I'll dispose of your body later. Mm-hmm. Mr. Quoth. <clears throat> the fussy elf, 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 with the air of Victorian butler studies you before he speaks. He doesn't like what he sees. Mr. Telestrian is expecting you. You'll find him in his office. Are you his butler? I am Mr. Quoth, his head of household. Ah. Mr. T Mr. Telestrian is waiting for you in his office. He's not one to be kept waiting. He walks like he has a stick up his ass. Okay, uh, this way to the office? Wow, that's so pretty. Okay, let's talk to the man himself. As you approach, James Telestrian III looks up from the computer screen built into the surface of his desk and assesses you, calculating and cold. A practiced smile comes to his face. He vibes the kind of rich you don't get from the trivet. Trivet? Hmm. I forget what that is. It's not the clothing or the trappings or the bow before your betters mansion. It's something else. The feeling that you're being categorized as a resource, or a liability, or a pawn. I have been reviewing the results of your visit to my Seattle office last night. I admit, they are impressive. You have generated a considerable amount of damage to my office complex, killed or wounded many of my security personnel, I cost my vice president of security his job. In 24 hours, you have accumulated quite a bill with me, ma'am. How do you intend to settle your debt? Etiquette corporate. Once my current assignment is complete, I would be happy to discuss working off my debt with you, Mr. Telestrian. That decision may happen one day, assuming the outcome of this conversation does not result in your immediate termination. When one is in my debt, they remain in my debt until such time that I decide that debt is repaid. There will be no negotiation on that point. However, you have one piece of information which you might use as a bargaining chip. 
in the little time you have left to live. Why you took what you took. I'm interested to know why you and your team of criminals fought your way through my security teams up to my private office to access the matrix, uncover the location of a simple research project. It goes like this. Your half-brother, Sam Watts, hired me to find his own killer. He had a dead man switch. When I find the killer, I get paid. The most protected item is usually the most valuable. That's why I took it. No, I took the Aegis sample to kill giant insects. You impress me, ma'am. My father's bastards are internationally not well known, even to themselves. Nevertheless, I failed to see the connection between Sam Watts' death and a raid on one of my office buildings. There is no connection between the research project and the dead man that I'm aware of. Sam was killed by your half-sister, Jessica. Jessica is, protecting, is protected by giant bugs. Aegis kills these bugs. Kills giant bugs. Kill the bugs. Kill Jessica. Get paid. I find your bluntness somewhat refreshing. He touches a button on the desk. Mr. Quaff, please ask my daughter to join us. Oh, look who it is. The young, pretty elf has dark circles under her eyes and a haunted expression on her face. She recognizes you instantly. Hmm. Mary Lou's Telesterian. It's you! You're the woman who helped me escape from the Universal Brotherhood. How did you get here? Telesterian cuts in quickly. Thank you, Mary Lewis. You have confirmed the identity of your rescuer and given me the reason to forgive her for her trespasses against me. We're lucky we saved her. <laughs> Mary Lou, so she, she, she looks angry for your help. Sorry, she looks hungry for your help. I'm glad you're here. You did well back there. Without you, we'd all be dead. She closes her eyes. Thank you. And I'm sure, I'm not sure that death wouldn't be better than this. I can't sleep at all. I'm afraid that this is a dream that I will wake up and there, and still be there with the bugs. You can relax, Mary Lewis. You are safe. It is over. No, it won't be over until they're all dead. She shudders. You didn't see them. You don't understand. You and those men you flew in here, all you do is talk. It's just like... You, to, sorry, it's just like you to form a committee, Father. I knew that someone had to take action. That is why I got Harkim involved. Harkim involved. The already cold exterior of James turns to ice. I see. It was you and your crippled little friend who leaked ages to this woman. We will speak of it later, in private. Now then, how long? There are people I wish you to meet. The committee, my daughter alluded to. This is a rare opportunity for a woman of the street such as yourself. I urge you to behave. We will adjourn to the library. I would be delighted. We're going to be polite, of course. I don't know if that is sarcasm or not. Just behave. There is weight in the Telestrian Library's sense of magnitude of purpose. You are no longer in the presence of mere wealth. You are in the presence of history.
Lady and gentlemen, this is Bela. She is a human who saved my daughter and the only one who has faced our con common enemy in combat. Herr Baracus, what does the representative of the great dragon, Lothweir, have to tell us about the magical insect the Shadowrunner uncovered? Baracus speaks slowly with a deep melodos. German accent. I ain't doing that. He takes his time, accentuating each word, relishing each vowel and each consonant, tasting them as if they were a delicacy. My lord, Lafware, has witnessed the insect spirit's physical manifestation before, roughly 9,000 years ago. As you are, a <laughs> as you are aware, Magic ebbs and flows from the earth, snuggling from peak to peak over the course of 5,200 years. As the level of magic grows, Hans, dear, I love you, but you could babble on forever, and I believe the time is of the essence. The painted, the painted elf addresses you. Ah, we need academic. How long is it? Delighted. The bug you fought was not merely a magical awakened animal, like the wyvern or hydra, or something else in the sixth world. In fact, it isn't from this world at all. It's the physical embodiment of an insect spirit from another plane of existence. I imagine that moving from one plane of existence to another isn't easy. I mean, that would be a great one to say if we could do it. I believe that would explain why I wasn't able to damage it. The spirit itself is extra planar. But we'll go with the first one. And imagine that moving from one plane of existence to another isn't easy. Correct. Perhaps Das German can tell you all about it at length someday. He's got plenty of time to chit-chat. Now, an insect spirit can't simply thumb a ride through astral space and show up on Earth late for dinner. Dinner in this case being us. Ah, Algeron. Two elements are required to bring one across the void. A shaman and a host. First, the spirit calls upon a shaman, often in dreams. The spirit seduces the shaman with promises of great power. The shaman then accesses the spirit as his totem. Next, the insect spirit requires a suitable host. The best candidates are the disaffected and the disenfranchised. In short, the weak wilt. The minds are the most susceptible to suggestion, which is helpful in making the, tra the transformation. As you may imagine, these, these are the sorts of people easily attracted to a cult, such as the Universal Brotherhood. Finally, the Harlequin. Finally, by performing what has to be truly disgusting ritual, the Shaman Serving the insect totem implants the spirit into the host, willing or not. Then it's feeding time. Harlequin is correct. The insect spirit will then slowly consume its host, while transforming it into the spirit's own insectoid body, thus manifesting itself fully on this plane. Oh, what's this have to do with a great dragon and an elf who likes cosmetics? No, that's very rude. Whiz, bugs from another dimension need killing. I get it. I don't like the sound of this. You shouldn't. It's bad. Really, really bad. The initial bugs prepare a nest for the summoning of the queen. Once a nest has its queen, she literally explodes with newly m manifested insect spirits. They swarm out of the nest, feasting on all the flesh they can find, 
and implanting more insect spares into the fresh corpses. Again, and again, and again. The room falls silent as they all consider the scenario. Faces grim. Telestrian breaks the silence. This is not an infestation, Balon. It's an invasion. My lord, Lothrier, knew this day would come, but he did not know precisely when nor where. Your rescue of Mr. Telestrian's daughter has exposed the existence of an insect spirit for the first time in this cycle of the world. Ah. <sighs> So you're early to the party this time. That gives you the upper hand, right? You're not early. We merely have experienced on our own side. The insect spirit is only is only a resident in a transformed host's body. Conventional weapons can hurt the body and expose the spirit, but the spirit itself cannot be destroyed by mundane means. Hence, Project Aegis. Hair Telestrian's Biotechnology and Agricultural Divisions worked with my lord, Lafier's... Oh, Jesus Christ. Thematerical? Engineers and designed Project Aegis to destroy an insect spirit once it is released from its host. The formula. A fluorescing astral bacteria strain exists in the physical and astral plane at once and can thus affect the insect spirit. Now that was a mouthful. Did you memorize it, or are you reading it off of index cards? My director of R&D, Diane Ravenwood, will explain how Project Aegis will be used in the field. Dr. Ravenwood? Diane Ravenwood. Our weapons specialists have rapidly prototyped a delivery device for the fluorescing astral bacterial strain. They've created some prototype launchers which fire Aegis-filled shells. When fired, the shells will discharge a high-velocity stream of the bacteria. In order to destroy one of the bugs, it must first be damaged using conventional weapons or magic until the spirit is released from the host. Then the insect spirit must be shot with a Project Aegis prototype launcher to destroy it. <sighs> so in order to stop an invasion of insects from another dra dimension, a dragon and an elf co-created a magical insecticide. Crudely put, but accurate. We must stop the Universal Brotherhood from summoning a queen. We must stop them immediately. You are the only one who has been inside their facility, and the only one who has personally fought these creatures before. That, along with your high, e highly effective assault upon my property, indicates you are the ideal person to lead the attack. What makes you think that this uh, project it just will actually work? Harlequin, he grins and his red lipstick catches the light. Because it has to. Come on, kid. When Fleet taps you on the shoulder, you've got to pay attention. Unfortunately, she has the nasty habit of tapping you on the opposite shoulder, so that when you turn around, she's on the other side, giggling. Like a deranged schoolgirl. I hate that. I like Harlequin. Enough. Are you willing to undergo this mission, Balong? You had me at killing bugs. Show me how to use the Aegis and I'll get it done. Excellent. Hello, Quinn. He claps his hands as if seeing the circus for the first time. I love the way that short-lived are willing to die even faster. It's very inspirational. And Bragus. Bragus raises his hand and Hello, Quinn's clapping instantly stops. There is one final note. A warning, if you will. You have seen the danger the insects represent, but you have not witnessed the shaman's power. 
the shaman must tap into a powerful circle of magic in order to summon a queen. We do not know what abilities that power source will grant. Beware of the insects, but do not underestimate the shaman. Hey, don't scare the kid, Hansel. We still need her to go on the mission. By the by, I'm coming with you, Valon. I wouldn't mind seeing these creatures for myself. I missed them last time. Celestrian will bankroll you so you can hire the rest of the team. Fine with me when you are ready to go, and we'll bug right out of here. <sighs> yes, speak with Harlequin when you are ready to depart. If you wish to acquire additional supplies for your mission, find my assistant, Quoth. He is highly resourceful. Mmm, uh-huh, uh-huh. But I think we're going to stop there for now. We have a lot more talking to do and to get set up for what would amount to an insane mission. Most definitely. So we'll do that in the next episode. Excuse me. I do hope that uh, you enjoyed... Sorry. I was just thinking that these guys almost kind of like, uh, look like Victor Von Doom. You know, just the wrong color. Anyways, I do hope you enjoyed this episode, and I hope you join me again for another installment, getting close to the end here, of uh, Shadowrun Returns. But until then, please do be safe, everyone. Bye!